Now, when you're in mortal danger, it's natural to go into fight or flight mode. If you see something hazardous coming towards you, your reflexes will make you duck or jump out of the way. However, instincts like this don't always happen in the world of horror movies. In a zombie flick or a slasher, there are people who respond to imminent danger by performing the worst of the survival instincts, doing absolutely nothing. So let's take a look at them as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 slasher horror movie characters who were seconds away from surviving. Number 10. Dr. Ardmore Child's Play now, Child's Play opens with a murderer called Chucky transferring his soul into a doll to cheat death, as you do. A young widow named Karen comes into possession of the doll and gives it to her son, Andy. Unable to control his murderous compulsion, Chucky kills again in this new body, starting with Karen's friend, Maggie. Even though Andy tries to warn people that Chucky did it, nobody believes him and he's sent to a psychiatric hospital. While the doctors perform tests on Andy to gauge his mental stability, Chucky stabs the psychiatrist, Dr. Ardmore, with a scalpel. While he lies wounded on the Around, Chucky places an electroshock device on the doctor's head. The demonic doll then sets the machine to full power, frying Ardmore's skull until blood gushes out of his mouth and eyes. However, Ardmore could have avoided meeting his maker if he just pulled the device off of his head. It wasn't strapped on or anything, so he could have whipped it off in less than a second. Since he failed to act, Dr. Ardmore only has himself to blame for his demise. Number 9. Tim – Final Destination 2 in the beginning of Final Destination 2, a teenager called Tim and several others narrowly escape being smushed in a horrific highway pileup. But because Tim was meant to die in this accident, death feels cheated and so prepares to kill him and the rest of the survivors. When Tim is getting his teeth sorted at the dentist soon after, the Grim Reaper causes a squeaky toy to fall into his mouth, cutting off his breathing. Fortunately, an assistant notices that Tim is struggling for air and pulls the toy out. Now, after this experience, you think that Tim would be more careful, but the next scene proves that he's anything but. Immediately after walking out of the dental office, Tim runs towards a flock of pigeons trying to kick them. As they fly away, one bird knocks into a construction worker, causing him to press a button that drops a window pane, and the pane falls straight onto Tim, crushing him to death. Now, if Tim had choked to death on the squeaky toy, it wouldn't have been his fault since he was paralyzed by the anesthetic. Sadly, that's not the case here since the cause of Tim's death falls squarely on his own shoulders. Number 8. The Soldier at the Beginning – Army of the Dead Army of the Dead begins with several soldiers transporting a zombie in a sealed container from Area 51 to an undisclosed location. When the convoy crashes into a car, the container opens, allowing the zombie to break free. Even though it's easy enough to criticize characters in a movie for acting stupid in a life-or-death situation, most people wouldn't fare better in the same scenario. After all, it's not uncommon for a person to freeze up in fear when their life is in danger. However, this logic doesn't apply to military personnel. Navy SEALs and Black Ops agents have been trained to think logically and act swiftly under the direst of threats, and yet the soldier in this scene takes zero precautions to protect himself from the zombie. When his superior yells at him to get away from the container, the idiotic soldier continues to walk towards the undead creature. In situations like this, you wonder why these people bother to join the army and enjoy years of grueling physical training when they can't be bothered to follow orders that are designed to keep them alive. Number 7. Moochie – Christine in the Stephen King adaptation, a nerdy teenager called Arnold falls in love with a Plymouth Fury called Christine and decides to buy it. When Arnold's car attracts the attention of a girl he fancies, he believes that his luck is finally starting to turn around for the better. Little does he know that his Plymouth Fury is alive and compelled to kill anyone who wrongs her. When Arnold gets picked on by a bully called Moochie, Christine chases after him the same night. When Moochie realizes that Christine isn't messing around and is trying to kill him, he seeks shelter inside an alleyway too narrow for Christine to drive through. However, the vengeful vehicle forces itself in, crushing Moochie to death. Even though Moochie has the most iconic death in the film, he could have easily evaded Christine. If he hopped onto the bonnet of the car, he could have escaped the alleyway. Although it's possible that Christine could have run him over afterwards, it's still silly that Moochie made no effort to get away from this devilish automobile, especially when it was driving towards him at three miles an hour. Number 6. Tom – Scream 3 in the Scream franchise, Sidney Prescott learns that she and her friends are being targeted by a masked murderer called Ghostface. Even though Sidney shot the killer dead, somebody else took on the mantle of Ghostface in Scream 3, causing Sidney to be stalked and tormented once more. To toy with his victims, Ghostface faxes pages of a screenplay which details who he intends to kill next, because this film was made when fax machines were a thing. Curious to learn who's next on the killer's hit list, Sidney's associate Tom ventures into the house where the page was faxed. Because Ghostface cut the power, Tom is 
forced to read the script with his lighter. To his horror, he reads the words, and the killer will give mercy to whomever smells the gas. Deducing that Ghostface has turned on all the gas in the house, Tom realizes that he needs to get out. But before he gets a chance, the fire from his lighter ignites the gas, causing the house to explode. Because Ghostface had cut all the power, Tom should have known that he was being led into a trap. If he just took the page out of the house and read it outside, he would have actually been fine. Number 5. Julius Friday the 13th 8, Jason Takes Manhattan Friday the 13th 8, Jason Takes Manhattan starts with the revived Jason Voorhees sneaking onto a ship that's setting sail for New York. Although the hockey mask wearing zombie kills several passengers, the survivors believe that they'll be safe when they reach Manhattan. But after docking, Jason continues to hunt them. One of the passengers, a boxer called Julius, foolishly decides to stand up to his pursuer and challenges him to a fight. After pounding on Jason for a minute straight with everything he's got, Julius only manages to stagger the monstrous brute. When Julius finishes his assault, he offers Jason the chance to take a swing at him. With one single uppercut, Jason knocks his head clean off. Now, just to be clear, Jason's punch does not catch Julius off guard. Not only is there a 20 second pause, but Julius asks Jason to hit him after he's demonstrated that he's a superhuman killing machine. After Julius realized that he couldn't defeat his opponent, he should have sprinted away. And that would be pretty easy since Jason seems to be incapable of running. Because of Julius' actions, you could argue that he wasn't even killed by Jason Voorhees, but by his own stupidity. Number 4. Agent Strom, Saw 5. Throughout the Saw franchise, Jigsaw places people in deadly traps and tells them to do what they need to in order to survive. Because his victims think Jigsaw is deliberately misleading them, they usually don't listen. But there is one simple rule if you find yourself in one of Jigsaw's games. If you follow his instructions to the letter, you will live to see another day. Sadly, Agent Strom learned the hard way what happens when people refuse to listen. In the conclusion of Saw 5, he enters a room that contains a casket filled with broken glass and a tape recorder. By playing the tape, he's informed by the killer that he must enter the box to survive. When Agent Hoffman appears a moment later, Strom shoves him inside the coffin. To Strom's horror, he realizes that Jigsaw was telling the truth. When the coffin lid shut, it triggered a mechanism that causes the walls to close in and crush Strom. This mechanism also causes the coffin to slide out of the room, proving Strom would have been safe if he just obeyed Jigsaw. Sadly, Strom's defiance forced him to meet a rather grisly end. Number 3. The Guard – The Fly 2 in The Fly, Seth Brundle accidentally fused his DNA with a housefly, causing him to gradually turn into a human-insect hybrid. Since he met his end in the film's climax, the sequel focuses on his son Martin, who also harbors the genes of a fly. Believing his DNA could be used to benefit mankind, a group of scientists raise Martin inside a lab. But when his fly DNA activates, he transforms into a monster and begins attacking everyone in the facility. During a fight, Martin's pursuer accidentally turns on an elevator, while the creature hurls a guard directly down below the descending lift. Realizing that he's away from being crushed, the guard leaps out of the elevator shaft as quickly as possible. Oh wait, no, he didn't do that, instead he just lies there like a moron. This scene would have worked if the guard had broken his leg or something after being knocked into the shaft, but since the guard seems physically fine, there is no explanation why he didn't just get out of the way. His inaction is so nonsensical that you'd assume that the scene was parody if you saw it out of context. Number 2. Paula – Zombie Flash Eaters Zombie Flesh Eaters centers around Dr. David and his wife Paula, who are investigating a tropical island that's supposed to be populated by zombies. While Paula is asleep, a reanimated corpse attempts to break into her house, and although she successfully shuts the door on the zombie, its hands break through and grab her by the hair. As she struggles to wrestle free, the zombie drags her head towards a piece of splintered wood, impaling her eyeball. This isn't just the most famous scene in the movie, but amongst the most iconic deaths in horror. As agonizing as this moment looks, it's the way the camera lingers on the wood just out from the door that makes her demise so uncomfortable to watch. But when you break the scene down, it actually doesn't make sense. She could have avoided having her eyeball gouged out if she just lifted her head or tilted it to the right. Even though she looks like she's trying to desperately escape from the zombie's grasp, she's clearly not moving her head. By angling her neck in any direction except straight ahead, she would have easily avoided the splinter. And number 1. Harold, Leprechaun 4 in Space the original Leprechaun may have not taken itself seriously, but Leprechaun 4 in Space takes the tongue-in-cheek humor to a whole new level. Considering this film has cyborgs, lightsabers, and a scene where the Irish fairy turns into gonorrhea, it's obvious that the story is deliberately over the top. Nevertheless, the characters in this movie are so stupid, you genuinely question whether they have higher brain function. While the Leprechaun performs mischief on a space station, just don't ask how we got there, he's attacked by an assistant called Harold. Furious, the Leprechaun uses telekinesis to hurl a tray at Harold. Even though 
though this tray is paper thin and not particularly sturdy, the impact somehow squashes Harold's poor head like a pancake. However, Harold could have evaded this incredibly stupid death by, you know, just trying to move. Despite the fact that he can see the leprechaun's projectile coming towards him from a mile away, he makes no effort to duck or jump out of the way. Instead, he just stands there screaming like an idiot, almost like he's inviting the leprechaun to kill him in the dumbest way imaginable. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 slasher horror movie characters who were seconds away from surviving. I hope you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Instagram, where it's at RetroJ, but the O is a zero. Hope to see you over there. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. Hope you're treating yourself well with love and respect, my friend, because you deserve all the best things in life. And do not let anything or anyone else tell you otherwise, all right? You're a massive ledge, and I wait to go out there and smash it today. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon.